We can hope. Is that getting sound? No sound, Dr. Clark. No sound, no sound, no sound. Yes, no sound. We can't hear you. No sound. That is currently a mine app. This is currently a mine app. <laughs> mine. Mine is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so sound. We are hearing you now. How is the sound quality? Is that okay? Or is that rough or whatever? Because I've been having fun. Uh, it had to be altered. It, it, me and Drac have been comparing how we've been adjusting to the, uh, the various things going on. <laughs> Gordon Con, do you think you'll do 30 minutes of talking to himself again? Hopefully we'll never repeat that, okay, Gordon? Hopefully. Hopefully we'll never repeat that again. <laughs> oh, for some reason, and I do not know why, the joyous thing that it that is Xbit Sound, I decided to set up using a random USB mic, which I do not know where it exists because the only USB mic I have is this one. So, you know. King Idris King Rod, I am H Idris Hood. Nobody can say that away from me. <laughs> okay, HMS King George V is singing this lovely song. I am HMS Hood. Nobody can take that away from me. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys! Thank you for three minutes in without sound. Ah, uh, good. Ah, uh, there we go. Right, Aaron. Hello, nice to see you, and thank you, Jeff Beeler. Yes, nice. Albert Warming. Hello, Jim Heaton. Hello, John Shear. Hello, Tom Frog. Hello. hello, King George V. Hello, haven't seen anyone. I was basically saying hello to everyone. So, Paul Breswick. Hello, Jeff. In Jeff Inoff. Hello, Carl Gangham. Hello. Hope you're all well. Um, I am not on the Iron Brew today yet because I have already gone through a, a bottle overnight and I'll probably go for another bottle over next night because the scaffolding's still not down due to high winds and we keep having interesting people playing around. So, you know, crackling my ears. Breaks are the loud loudest and crackling my ears. Let's turn down the game just a tad then. The volume is at its lowest. How's that? Is that better? Is that better? Hopefully. Hopefully that is better. And I'll move this back a little bit. And so it's sort of low, but back a little bit. Hopefully that is better. <laughs> Maybe turn down a uh, bit. Reduce volume. Volume is at its lowest. It's gain, which I have to reduce at the moment. Uh, this morning when I was doing recording with Drac, I had to have um, maximum gain, minimum sound. And he had maximum sound, minimum gain to deal with the atmospherics. And I suppose it just flipped around again. Still a bit enthusiastic again. Okay, down we go. Down we go on the gain. Down we go. How's that sound? Is that better? Or that gone too quiet? How about that? Is that okay? How about this? Hopefully that's okay. Hopefully that sort of is all right and is in the right sound. So, Crete in 1941 was a mess. It is definitely very much so a mess. A mess of our own cre creating, basically. Definitely a mess of Britain's own creation. Definitely a mess of, you know, definitely someone's creation and definitely someone's mess a little bit in Crete in 1941. Is that better? I should... the. I have found that if I want to have the earplugs over my ears to listen to it properly without it being weird, I have to pay X split five pounds a month. And I probably will break down and do this, but at the moment I'm trying to sort of see if I can do it now. Hello. 
Hello, so let's see. Is that better with the volume up a bit? We'll see. Let's try it here. Hello? All right. So, Crete in 1941 is a fun time, and hopefully that's okay for the sound quality. If it isn't, just say. Um, I've done some tweaking. Close to the Adriatic, I assume you want to nudge Dr. Clark and about that theater operations. A little louder, please. Goodness gracious me. What has happened to my mic? How's that? Because it starts off really, really loud. Okay. We're going to leave it at there because who knows. So, could Crete have been saved in 1941? Could it? Yes. There is a very, very simple answer. Crete could have been saved in 1941. It could have been saved in 1940, to be honest. That's when the decisions to save Crete could have best been taken, in 1940. Because in 1940, when they moved in in November, if they'd started building some proper roads, if they'd started going right then. And actually, you'd have thought they would have been building proper roads anyway and putting in proper infrastructure, because if you're going to build airfields to use it as part of air operations to cover Greece, to cover the eastern Mediterranean, you would think you would want roads. You would also think, if I'm going to be bringing tankers and merchants, which move slow and are large targets, to refuel and resupply my bases here... You know what? Do I want to bring them all the way round Crete to the exposed side, or shall I keep them on the south? You know, there are all sorts of reasons and legitimate options which should have led to them actually doing a coherent strategy of infrastructure. I'm not even talking about the fence. Just doing some freaking infrastructure would have probably made Crete a very different battle. We're, we're, we're talking roads. We're talking the very basic thing of military infrastructure. You send in a heavy engineering unit. In fact, don't even bother. There is one. It's sent with, well, it could be sent with the Royal Navy's mobile naval based organization. They take a heavy engineering unit. Someone actually made the specific decision. Not to use them elsewhere. They aren't used elsewhere. They are left behind in Alexandria for no reason. Then someone decides to offload them there and have them sit on the freaking dock. Why? Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, old Richard. It's just... The Brits were running short of everything. Um, Brecken Kendall, all the good harbours were on the north. Roads wouldn't necessarily have helped. Having Rodex probably would have. Um, no, actually, there is one good harbour on the south. Sefrax. There is... It's not massive. It's not a spectacular harbour, but it's a good enough harbour. And there is a road already built between Safrax and the north. They use it, but they could have made it a far better road quite quickly. And that would have been a very good point because for resupplying troops and bringing troops in, it would have cut down the distance. It would also provide a route for actually the Allied forces to evacuate down. But we'll leave that to one side. It would have been a very, very sensible thing to have done that road. And it wouldn't have been a difficult project at all. Abazaski, a nice enthusiastic rant and still no clipping. Sound perfect now. Well, we'll see if we can leave it like this. So... Go on, Eagle. Were the Brits in Crete running short of artichokes? Yes. Daniel Freeman, 
if the roads were good enough for King Ninos, they were good enough for the British Army. The trouble is they're not good enough for the British Army. That's the thing. For moving heavy equipment quickly, you need a slightly smoothed, slightly fatter road. And you actually need some transport there. That's the next thing. You are going to be there from November. Why have some blooming lorries not arrived? And I'm not talking a couple of a couple of few. Again, you are building four airfields. You have got a huge amount of heavy plant already there. A little bit more to build some roads, and a little bit more to provide some lorries are all sensible additions. If you are setting up four airfields for air operations, this is the thing: they are setting up four airfields for air operations. They know Suda Bay and those northern ports are going to come and attack. So, modernising the one southern port, which could potentially take things, doesn't seem absurd. As does not putting it up. Blooming road. Again, this is all sensible infrastructure. This isn't even about defending the island. This is a case of I am building four airfields. I need to support them. So let's build some infrastructure. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to build a road between the airfields. Yay. That's going to go up and down between the airfields. And oh, we're not going to connect them to the ports in any way, shape, or form. Dragon Kenner, I love to take Battle of, Kenner, Battle of Creek personally. I do take it personally because a lot of very brave soldiers gave their lives fighting for it. A lot of very good commanders get tarnished because of it, get their reputations tarnished because of it, unfairly. And it's, it's just so easy to win! It could have been won so easily. Literally, some infrastructure so you could move your equipment around. That would have won it. Or, I don't know, putting an extra company in a freaking riverbed or the other side of the riverbed so you could fire at the enemy if they land in the riverbed. Could have won it. Or, doing some work with a plow. That could have won it. Anything that could stop the JU-52s being able to land and take off. One. Oh. Sure, Mac. The whole plan for Greece was flawed because they stripped North Africa of troops so the commander in North Africa went uh, want their stuff back and the plan from Greece was we're all going to hold everything. Yeah. <sighs> In car, was Wavell Wilson responsible for the various changes of commander prior to Battle of Crete? Not really, because Wavell keeps sending out people to take command, and then head office back in London keeps saying, oh no, we need that commander elsewhere. So you're slowly going down the list of commanders. And the trouble is, again, there is this Major General Weston sitting there. And his, two jo his job is he takes temporary command every time there's a change in commander. But he's not, he's the one who's got the staff and everything there. But the only thing he's put in charge of organizing is Suda Bay, the air defenses around Suda Bay, putting the infrastructure in Suda Bay, oh, and preparing the evacuation plan from Suda Bay. So the only plan they actually have, which has been thought out and worked out for months, for about a couple of months by the time this takes place, is the evacuation plan. Because the Royal Navy, because Admiral Cunningham is looking at the army and going, "Oh frick, we're going to have to evacuate you again, aren't we?" He just before he even started, he just knows he's going to have to do it. Martin Knox, that's right. We were having to rob the Western Desert Force for Greece and Crete operations, and the Western Desert Force was done on a shoestring. Yes. There was a, and this is another thing. If you are building airfields and you do not have, it's like Singapore again and Malaya all over again. They're building airfields for which they have no aircraft. You have no aircraft. Why are you building an airfield? Why are you building so many? Don't build so many. Build one airfield and put a whole division around it. That's what you should do. And then watch. No one's going to take it off you. You can actually support one airfield. Hey. Richard Hughes, any engineer will tell you uh, analog is better than digital. <laughs> Me. 
Yeah. Yeah. Pa, you call that road? The A12 was the old, old Roman road and had been in existence for 1700 years. Yes. Callum, you assume that you have lorries to spare. Here's the thing. The one things we do have to spare are artillery, anti-aircraft guns, and also lorries. Do you know why I know we had to spare? Because they all come on the same convoy with... The Air Monab and the uh, NDMDO and all that stuff and J and um, the Commando Brigade with them for the operation in Rhodes. They decide to cancel Rhodes, but they leave all their equipment, all their heavy gear sitting on the side in Alexandria and it doesn't get used. And by the time the, uh, the army in North Africa realizes it where it's sitting in Alexandria, the equipment's all out of date and they're not using it. This is the point. This is the, 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 the very heavy equipment you need. The lorries, the things. They've actually physically offloaded them off the ships. The ships have then sailed with troops to, Gre to Crete and then come back. They actually, they took more time offloading the equipment. And then what's what I said, they offload the equipment, but they leave the troops on. So they take the troops without their equipment to Crete. They actually take the troops without their equipment to Crete. They just... Why? Why would you do that? Why? Jeff Beeler, Crete does not get resources in November 1940, as the Commonwealth is also fighting in Libya, East Africa. Construction troops were in high demand. Probably why the MDO's units not sent to Crete. No, the MDBO's units don't arrive in November. Okay? The MDBO's units arrive in uh, March, April time, and they are basically, their equipment is offloaded in Alexandria, and then they're almost immediately sent straight up to um, Crete. So, the m &E when they arrive, are sent straight to Crete, but their heavy equipment is left behind in Alexandra, for a lot of them. Or, say, uh, about, there are 2,200 sent over there out of the 8,000 formation. And the rest are sitting along. And what you find is some of the units sitting... And what's funny is those ships still go to Crete without the troops aboard or without the heavy equipment aboard. And then from Crete, they go off to... Take, they wait in Crete for three days, and then they go from Crete to, uh, to Greece to take part in evacuations of these things. It's just the case of you, it's just reacting. It's not really thinking. I was asking, who is responsible for creatures Crete as a theater commander? Wave or Cunningham? Could it look like Singapore prelude or otherwise Singapore looks like lessons not learned? A general flaw in the system? It was Wavell. And it's one of the interesting things because you have Cunningham Sitting there having a, a conversation with his commanders, and the generals are all worried about seaborne invasion. They all keep talking about it, despite the information they're getting from Ultra, which Wavell is sort of trying to pass on, like he's emphasizing defend the air bases. Um, and Cunningham's going, There will nothing will come by sea. And it's amazing, nothing does come by sea till they're doing the evacuation and they let the Italians through because they're too busy doing the evacuation. But until then, nothing comes by sea. The Royal Navy ensures it doesn't. And it gets caught every single night. Angus Sonnen, was there a point of failure or was this a dark comedy of errors? The latter. Just keep... Old Richard, so exactly which single commander bears responsibility for the disaster of Crete? Who dropped the ball? That's the thing. No one really does drop the ball. It's just no one has the chance to implement or do anything. And you could say, you could put some blame on various Cunningham and the admirals on their evacuation from Greece and where the troops were going, but they were doing what the army was telling them. Telling them. The army presumed the troops would come to Crete and come back to Egypt. Then they would get time to cycle them through. The army was thinking they were going to have a month before the Germans would move on um, 
Crete and that they could have plenty of time to get organized. Oh, and that the Air Force would suddenly magically produce aircraft. Uh, it, it, there's all sorts of things which are planned. It just doesn't work out that way. J-52s were landing belly up on the beach to get reinforcements in. Yes. And pretty much, the be uh, if you had... It's going to sound strange. If you stop the first wave attack at Meleme, you probably stop the entire uh, entire battle. Brengan, I, can I can't help but feel that if the Brits had spare lorries, they wouldn't have, it would have been doing a lot better in North Africa as well. Not enough equipment of fighting on all fronts. Iraq, Syria, Egypt, Britain. Agreed. But the spare lorries for the troops actually deployed in Crete. So I'm not talking really about spare lorries. They're you lorries which are assigned to units, but they were sitting in Alexandria. And um, where is the book which I got this all on? Uh, yeah. I basically mean fact-checking this book for most of the time. It's David A. Thomas's Crete, 1941, The Battle at Sea, he calls it, he writes about. And he writes mainly about the Navy side of things because the Navy are going, what, uh, what's going on here? What, 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 and one of the interesting things is the vessels around, you, t you talk about ports and go, okay, they're really critical. Well, actually, all the Glen, quite a few of the Glen class large landing ships were actually part of the force sent with the lay force, etc. to, to there. They were there. They could land troops anywhere around Crete. That's the thing. The British had control of the sea. They could have landed troops where they liked. Land them and offload them. And they do. To collect them. Then that's it. Very mixed. Air under one command. Army under a second commander. Frequently rotating on, ground, on the ground command. And RNFO commander. None of these are integrated. Yes, the closest you have to an integrated command structure is if you have Major General Weston in charge. Um, I feel a Freiburg deployed to defend against a seaborne attack, did not consider an airdrop. That's actually one of the things which is mistakenly put about him. He actually does consider an attack. As I point out, he's he's very orientated around air attack, but he's a very also very preoccupied with the idea of seaborne attack. Despite the Navy, Ultra, and everyone telling him they're not going to come by sea, and if they do, the Navy will deal with them. Um, he's very concerned with the 27,000 things because tons of of shipping the Axis have collected because his view is the only way that the, the Axis actually had the power of defeating him is if they offset, if they, they managed to land tanks, which is quite true. They land tanks, they, they've got a massive advantage. He hasn't got many tanks. But um, the fact is his sub-commanders are interesting and quite strange. Brent Kendall, they should have fortified Greece for, uh, Crete rather than sending a force to Greece, but hey, hindsight. Yeah, honestly, you should have been fortifying Crete as your backup point the moment you send the force to Greece. And you could have done it under all infrastructure construction, so you're not worrying the, Crete, the Greeks. Just go, oh, we're just building infrastructure to support the air bases. Raw Boa, this must be the level of tilt you get if you mention Nassau and BTN Genesol in one sentence to Drac. To be honest, if you mention all those three to Drac in the same conversation, you get something far worse. Gone, Daniel Freeman. All that mortars will do whatever, uh, where heavy artillery is missing. I'm pretty sure as sturdy as J52, it's not going to stand into a two inch mortar. No, it shouldn't, but that's if they've deployed the mortars in the right place. Paul, Beaver, uh, argue, again, argues the uh, Royal Artillery and Royal Engineer were the outstanding calls in World War II. Both calls demanded high-level technical education on their officers. Would battle different if an RA, uh, with a Royal Engineering or Royal Artillery officer in command? <sighs> Possibly, but honestly, Freiburg is not a bad commander. Don't The thing is... You, it's often put on the commanders being bad. They're not bad. It's just you've got a divisional commander who hasn't got a divisional staff. Here's one of the exact classic examples. Okay, the divisional staff and the divisional radios for second division are all sent to Alexandria. 
They all arrive in Alexandria long before the Battle of Crete arrives, and no one sends them back. Freyberg requests them three times. They do not get sent back. So he is a divisional commander without a divisional staff and without radios to command his unit. And he's no longer a divisional commander. He's promoted from division command to commanding of the whole of Crete. Multiple units. And so there's a divisional commander now underneath him who doesn't have a command headquarters or staff or anything. Or radios. And there's a island commander, a fortified combined commander, who doesn't have a staff or radios or anything. So they have a handful of officers each. This is not how you run a war. See what? Political target was to keep Turkey neutral. RN did its duty crushing German Italian sea lift. Must have made impression to the Turks, possibly waiting for fall up, and that didn't come. Eh, to an extent, but uh, the RN loses a lot fighting Crete. Crete is guts the RN in the eastern uh, east Mediterranean. Right, let's see if I can find the questions. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah. <laughs> Jeff Beeler, artillery, anti-aircraft guns and trucks were in short supply. They were, but as I said, the ones for these units are actually sitting on the docks in Alexandria. They're sitting there and in Port Said. They are sitting on the docks in Alexandria, Port Said. They're not being used by the army in North Africa. The army in North Africa often doesn't actually realise they're there. Um, it's just, they're just... Uh, in car, Greece, Crete, Singapore, all impacted by the reticence of the RAF to deploy most modern aircraft with fire outside the UK until 1942, despite Luftwaffe re relocating for Barbarossa. This is because they were fighting the Battle of Britain and they were worried about it. That's their cru becomes their crux. Stuart Crown. I do hope the fact that Crete was such a good, is such a, um, doesn't prevent official recognition of the 80th anniversary. We can hope. I'm not having a meltdown quite yet, King George V. There was a stocks of 25 pounder guns sitting on Alexandria at this point. Either bring the guns from the gunners from Crete to North Africa or send the guns. As I say, I don't care which, just do it. Yes, um, me and Daniel had a very nice discussion, which at some point is going to go up, where basically we're both sitting there going, but the guns, and we had done our independent research and both of us had found the same thing and we're just going, oh my God. Jeff Beeler, oddly captured Italian artillery was sent to Crete. Lots of captured Italian artillery was sent to Crete. But not the 25 pounders the units had come with, so they had to learn how to use Italian artillery. Baton Ronson, a better defense on a uh, airfield might have prevented a German attack altogether. Funny to think where they might have used those Farshinger and Goshang uh, uh, Gibsinger uh, instead. Yeah. Uh, Farshinger, Yoga, uh, and Goshwainer, they could have been used for a lot more things. Some mentioned the Bob Semple tanks. These were there were some tanks. Sources are different numbers on Crete. Some are Tilda twos and some Vickers light tanks. Basically, the sources differ as numbers in mainly because of which ones were actually working and whether they had ammunition for them. Jeff Beeler, every war game I've ever owned stresses the lack of resources in the Middle East Command, which stretches from Greece to Kenya and east uh, east to Iran and west to Libya. Oh yeah, I agree. There is a lack of resources, but there's also a fact that when they do have the resources. And in this force, most of the things deployed to Crete are, especially the reinforcements deployed to Crete, half of them come from Greece, but half of them are troops which are actually passing through to take part in the roads operation. So they had come from Europe, from the UK, with all their equipment with them, and then they leave their equipment behind in Alexandria and are sent as infantry, artillery units are sent as infantry, engineers are sent as infantry to Crete.
Calm guys, where the four airfields, proper airfields are more like modern ocean runways. More like grassy, flattened grass. So you could have plowed them up quite easily. Inca, was General Freyberg an authorised recipient and was he properly briefed on ultra reports and reliability of the information? Um, he wasn't, uh, he was briefed on the reliability of the information, but he was given in ultra information via General Wavell, who was basically telling him these things. It seems. I, I don't think he gets, he gets the ultra of the crypts himself. Sean Mac, Greece is a classic Churchill because he pushed his commander to do something clearly sensible, securing the Med's eastern flank, and then he does it in the worst possible way. To an extent, yes, but also there's the fact that the Greeks lose 223,000 soldiers in Albania. That's the thing. If that That's the loss. And the Greek prime minister commits suicide. Cray, uh, Jeff Bieler, Freiburg had ultra, but he fought them. The, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the information he was going, he was focused. It seems to be, no matter how many times, Wavell, Cunningham... Western, tell Freyberg, tell every commander that comes through, Wilson, all of them, that it's going to be an airborne attack, that it won't come, that anything that comes by sea will be dealt with by either the RN submarines or destroyers or cruisers. They still concentrate on the seaborne attack. Danny Freeman, I think all of them were starting to see dirt round tarmac. Uh, two were finished, Malerm and Herakon, while Rayfin had one in development and there was another one, a fourth one in development as well. So they're not great. They are not they're not what we call modern airfields. They're rough strips, definitely rough strips. You find similar things in Iceland these days. Um, Calvin Gusman, I meant an airfield was like with 1,000 by 800 meters. Yeah, that one. Uh, 1,000 where you can land in any direction. Jeff Bieler. Okay. Talking this through, Dr. Freebird VC might have been read in on Ultra, but would not have experienced of it. Crete was too small to attract much. Um, Jeff Bieler, naval transport was at a premium during this time, and Greek sensibilities were an issue. I agreed on all these things. But the actual naval transports loaded with the personnel, offloaded their heavy equipment, and then took those personnel onto Crete. And one of those vessels which did it was a great big landing ship large, Glen class. In nicest way, it doesn't matter what harbour facilities, and actually they're quite good at Suda Bay, and not too bad as a breaker. You you have you could offload heavy equipment using that. That's what it was designed to do. <sighs> Car Harmon Creek probably could have been saved had the hill by the airfield not been taken. Yeah, that's the next thing. You know, even if you don't do the infrastructure, just keep hold of one hill. That's all you have to do. And to keep hold of that hill, all you have to do is not evacuate it. Sure, Mac. Now I see why Wavell was reduced to playing with crayons by the time he was relieved in North Africa. Honestly, frankly, Wavell has uh, gone up in my estimation the more I've studied Crete, because he's sitting there going... He basically, at one point, goes over to have a meeting with Freyberg and all of them before uh, we're taking Wilson off. And he essentially stands and goes, the, does everything but says, and I'll just quickly skip through these to, go, to get to the quote. Wavell's exact quote and exact words were, he made it clear that Crete was to be held in order to deny it to the enemy as an air base. The probable objectives would be Hurricane and Malam airfields. No additional air support would be forthcoming. 
The force would be commanded by General Freyberg. You know, in the nicest way, he is pretty much doing everything short of telling them, rip up the airfields. If you're not going to have air support, that's the first thing you do. I'm not going to have air support. I need to deny these airfields to the enemy. Rip them up. I have got lots of farmers with lots of plows. Plow the fields. Done. Let's be honest. A far, a most The farmers on Crete could have done those airfields in an afternoon. And then it would have been a case of we'll hold where we we'll hold the hills, and you guys can have the airfields if you want, but they're not going to be fun to have. Uh, the thing is, if uh, the thing is, Western and ABC have a good relationship going on, and that could have been helped. Ian Carr, if the RAF had committed a similar level of resource, fighters radar as the RN did, rather than leaving Crete, the result might have been different. It did. They actually left radars. They had radars there. They just didn't have fighters because they didn't have the fighters in theater to commit them. The yeah, F, did, uh, did the Brits have enough time la to launch a counter airborne raid to stem the advance of Germans, or does that just mean you lose more men? Honestly, they have enough time, but they actually have enough time they land people from the sea. They actually send transports over. A lay force gets sent, the commandos um, that have been sent to North Africa to take part in the operations on roads get sent to Crete to reinforce them as the attacks are going on. Mondok, don't, uh, Freeman, I heard that Freiburg was told not to position his forces following Ultra into info in case the Germans uh, uh, sussed it out had been broken. No, because uh, you are supposed to try and disguise Ultra, but defending airfields and ports is not really uh, an illogical thing to do, and it's what he does anyway. Jeff Beale, Lieutenant Colonel Ian R. Campbell commanding all Allied forces in Rafemo area shows that a, what a successful defense would look like. Sadly, he and his units all became POWs. Yet this is half the trouble. They actually, if they controlled state money, the units held. Herald can hold and then gets evacuated. Rafemo gets can hold and then has to commit be. Uh, has to become POWs because of the Italians arriving. They're just, they're, 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 yeah, it's just uh, no. Sorry, I'm going a bit sad, but seriously, the whole battle. It's uh, Crete is this sort of format. You have these things coming in, the forces coming in, the information, and the preparation stage. As I said a long term from November. If you want to do change it there, you start building infrastructure. You have roads, you have suffrax end up November. By the time it gets to May, you can have roads running backwards and forwards. You can bring stuff into the south side of Crete, where it's got a, re a far better security against air attack and all these things. You can resupply far easier and all these things. The other option you can do is you actually... So, uh, give them more lorries. That could be a shorter term thing. The lorries and heavy equipment could arrive in March when it's supposed to get there in the AA and the artillery. Or you could do the most th short term thing, which is move a couple of companies, which we'll get to. There are several stages at which you could win Crete. Uh, Albert Zaski, if I recall correctly, campaign in Greece and later evacuation was heavily hindered by ammo ship being hit in Paris and the resulting spider wrecking the whole harbour. Yes, it did. But they still had plenty of ammo around, actually. It just wasn't in the right places. They needed to move it. And they had uh, they had ammo they could move to Crete quite easily. And actually, one ammo ship went to Crete and then went back without offloading before the, even the operation actually began. 
Um, Trima, you know, I remember some British exercise that told them that having radios was very, very, very good and that you should always have them. Yeah. Radios. Staff sh uh, and staff for division all loaded on the same ship. Went to Alexandria, sitting in Alexandria for the entire operation for about I, uh, they, they, they could have been back on Crete with it. They could have been on Crete within less than 24 hours. Jeff Eiler, Freiburg defends things which don't need defending and does not defend the important airfields with strength. My lamb should have had a full brigade on it. It did have a full brigade on it. We're going to get to that. Malemic does have a full brigade in its location. It has a full brigade there. They are defending it around Maleme, but, you know, they have a full brigade there. It's it's not not deployed a brigade there. It's not a little company sent to defend an airfield. It's There is a company on the airfield, but there's a whole brigade around it. Paul, Dodge Clark, the army mismanaged the loading and unloading of ships in Norway, and again when they tried to reinforce Calais in 1940. Did they learn, do a lessons learned after earlier disasters? Yes, the Royal Navy was trying to take over it, but it was still not fair, it's still not doing so well in taking over in Crete. Um, there is go there was a lot of effort put into learning logistics lessons. Mandok, Jeffy, a lot of troops were evacuated from Greece. Some never had weapons. They did have weapons. This is the thing. 7,000 rifles were delivered to Crete to arm those troops who didn't have left their guns behind in Greece. They actually deliver the rifles to them. The trouble is they deliver rifles to troops who actually don't usually often use the rifles that much. Uh, mostly engineers and artillerymen, but they do use rifles, but they have their other equipment, and their other equipment was left back in Alexandria. Uh, in car, Crete sounds like problems in Norway a year before. No realistic planning or coordination of forces. Yeah. Danny Freeman, Jeff Hiller, the defense that all three German LZs, other than Malayan, were good, and the Malayan was let down by a breakdown in comms and a relative junior officer making a decision, thinking only locally. Thinking very, very locally. Um, DF, do the tasks of engineers differ from army to army? You said the Brits deployed them without heavy weapons, but could they be tasked with fortification, destruction of roads and bridges? Yes, they could. They are. They have all those. They have those other things. But their trouble is, their plot heavy plant, their equipment was all shipped to um, back to. Alexandria, and they weren't used for it. These are the three commanders I've picked. Freyberg, Wavell, and Student. Mainly because they have pictures, and I have talked about others quite often. Um, Student is the one who comes up with the plan, and frankly, if he'd known his plan was against that many troops, he probably wouldn't have gone through with it. Wavell, I feel very sorry for. Um, I, I, I think the poor man deserves the amount of stuff which was put on him. Um, the Royal Navy couldn't understand why he had such a big command. They really honestly couldn't understand it. It seemed to them quite silly for one man to have to command all that with so few resources. And Freiburg, well, I've already defended him a few times. Um, let's see. Derp Squad. That's a clock. Beyond plowing up the fields, digging trenches, through them would make uh, both make them unusable and make defense positions as a bonus. Removing the pl planes signaled its intent to retreat. That's the thing. The reason the planes are removed isn't because of a signal of retreat. They're removed because they're down to seven, and the idea is they can't offer a meaningful air defense for the island. Well, the thing is, you don't need them. Again, this is Freyberg is thinking along sort of I would call it peacetime World War I ideas for what fighters do. They provide air defense. They block off enemy air raids. Well, you can't do that. But they can still attack the slow lumbering transports. The thing is, you can pick to launch the fighters at the transports rather than at the bombing raids. You're going to have to live through the bombing raids and the uh, enemy air attacks, but you can hide seven aircraft quite easily.
Uh, okay, Richie's. I don't think British commanders thought they were doomed. They just misunderstood the nature of the threat. Failure of comms. No problem. Thank you, Dana. See you, mate. Very early war in the UK stretched just to spy North Africa, much less extending to Greece and Crete. This is a very high level gamble. Churchill rolled the dice. Uh... I, I would agree with Greece, but actually with Crete, as I keep saying, the equipment is actually sitting in Alexandria. And Crete doesn't require that much equipment to defend it. It really doesn't. You could have defended Crete with probably... I would have preferred, if I was defending Crete, I would have preferred to have two fully worked up divisions sitting there, of course. Um, six brigades would have been lovely. I'd have had a brigade sitting at Sifrax. I'd have had Three brigades around Suda Bay and Malam, exactly where they were. And I'd have had two brigades where they were. And pretty much they had five brigades there anyway. So I'd want a six brigade. And basically, my plan of action would be right then, if there's an attack, have all my motor, have these brigades all nicely logistic and put in, and have the brigade at Suffrax on the north, on the south, slightly further away, all motorized, ready to go and go right then. We're under attack here. Respond. And within a night, they could be in a position and suddenly you'd have a brigade launching a counterattack while the other brigades held their positions. Golden Eagle. Um, just a detour question. I've been forgetting to time and ask, could Hood have been saved in Denmark Strait? Why is it called Denmark Strait when it's nowhere in anywhere near Denmark? Uh, well, on the latter one, it's just the joys of geography and who named it. And on the first one, um, yeah, it could have survived Denmark Strait, as I said, that, that we've discussed this in the past when we're talking about battle cruisers. Um, Hood, the shell is a lucky shell, and Hood goes down. Uh, my theory is it thinking is it hits the four inch ammunition storage, and that's what cooks off, but you know, underwater. Martin, not Danny Freeman, uh, their main concern was to get as much. Of Jumbo Wilson's army of Crete as they could, hence why some went to Crete, uh, Greece uh, in the short term around in the same to Alex. Yeah, that was one of their major concerns, but they do start sending stuff back, and the first thing I'd have sent back would have been the divisional staff. That would have been the most sensible thing. We've got to run a division. We're going to secure a Crete. Send back this divisional staff to help run it. You could have made a whole lot of things a lot easier with the proper divisional staff. Ian Carr, could, would Crete have been defendable longer term as it was so close to Greece? It would have been a position like Malta without modern RAF fighters and radar logistics. It would have probably suffered air attacks and considering how close it was within heavy bomber range of the Romanian oil fields, the Germans would have certainly made a run for it. But it could have been defendable. Yes, you could have. You probably ended up having two or three divisions on there. And you have to put that as the compensation of, yes, you have that limit, but also you then secured the Eastern Atlantic, uh, Eastern Mediterranean. If we go through, and I'm going to disappear for a second. This map, as you can see, if you can secure Crete, if you get Crete, then you've basically secured a huge chunk of your area. You've made resupplying Malta that much easier because suddenly you have air defense which can cover you the whole way. You can stop and provide air support to land base in North Africa or you can attack oil fields in Romania. You can do all sorts of things to the Germans. So actually securing Crete would be sensible. And Crete is... How do I put this politely? This is Crete. Crete, as you can see, is mostly mountainous region. The bit you need to secure, rather like if you're securing, I don't know, tai uh, Taiwan, is a coastal area. In this case, it's the north. And if you can secure that, you're pretty much fine. And if you could have a base at the back, then you're even better. Jeff Beeler, the airfields were not ploughed because the RAF might come back. Yes, but again, if you've ploughed the airfields and you control the airfields, you can unplough the airfields. It's going to take some time, but it's a lot easier to unplough an airfield than it is to recapture an island. 
Sure, Mac. Again, one fortified airfield with earthworks for, plane, uh, for the planes. Why is this so hard? That would have been sensible. Again, why are they building four? You don't have the aircraft for four. Build one, defend it well. Jeff Eiler, could hurricanes fly to Crete from Egypt? I Let's see. Um, go back to this one. I think it could be just about within the ferry range of a hurricane. Uh, let me just check. Ferry range uh, they've got is 520 nautical miles or 600 miles. So, yes, it's within the ferry range of uh, a hurricane to get from Alexandria and Egypt, North Egypt to Crete or to Brook. The main concern was to get the army off Greece, but in that case, they should have also been... The main concern was to get the army off Greece, and yes, that was a big concern, and it was necessary to evacuate them. But actually, they started planning the evacuation, and this is something I can get into quite happily. Um, Cunningham starts planning the evacuation of Greece on the 24th of March. Cunningham has a fairly well-developed plan for the evacuation of Greece. The army manages to not quite cooperate with that, but he's working on it. And the thing is, he's offering to move units back. One of the first things he does when units turn up in Alexandria, which are needed back on Crete, is go, do you want me to send them back? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Why not? Uh, we don't need them yet. Why don't you need the staff for the division you're actually putting in Crete? Uh, we'll get back to you. By the time they get back to you, Crete's fallen. It's actually interesting. There is actually a... a I'm not sure if this is true because I can't find the paperwork for it, surprisingly enough. But there is a rumor that the request to return, or rather to take the staff of 2nd Division to Crete actually arrives two days after Crete has been evacuated by the Royal Navy. And Cunningham apparently goes, I think it's a bit late. Ryan, I don't want to miss questions. Uh, Jerison, everyone seems to forget the successful campaigns in Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq. Yes, and Wilson was critical to them. He was very good at that. Wavell is a good commander, and he's doing his best, but he's doing his best with the cinema. Jeff Yeller, Brigadier James Hardish should take the most blame for a bad deployment and being distracted by paratroops close to his HQ. Not really, no. He is keeping his brigade in well control, uh, under good control, and they're fighting back. It's, again, he's missing staff because they have to reorganize the brigade staffs to cover for the lack of a divisional staff and the lack of an air, of a area staff. So no one notices what the battalion commander has done. And the battalion commander has made a sound, what is it, he thinks is a sound local decision, but it's actually a stupid long-term decision. Hi, Stafford Thompson. DF, did the Brits try any trickery on Crete? Paper planes, fake tanks to make it appear it's defended, but just as unready as opposed to undefended and unready? Not really. Yeah, man, what are the good What did I miss so far? So far, I've been, my, I've been my normal, calm, quiet self. I really have been. 
Um, Daniel Freeman and Martin Dock. Uh, Rommel attacked North Africa in March and Germans evaded, invaded Crete in May. The Western Desert Force immediately goes on, on the run. So bigger issues. They do. But again, to defend Crete against air, to get air being taken. This is the thing. You might it, Malta was subjected to air bombardment pretty much the whole war, as was quite a lot of British territory. It's not nice. You prefer not to have it. But that doesn't mean you're going to lose the island. Well, the thing is to stop the enemy taking the island. And in the case of Crete, they could have done exactly as they did on Malta, which is a lot of ploughing. Malta, pretty much every flat space, which wasn't very heavily guarded by a lot of soldiery, was ripped up, ploughed up, and still covered by soldiery. There were some dummy AA artillery positions, and one of the lessons learned from it all was the need of more to that. I, mm, not very much at all. I don't. I, 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 there are some reports of it, but yeah. Um, Paul Duskock, Darfur was formed in 1942. Would it have made a difference if RAF controlled infantry units were focused on airfield defence and uh, were present? Honestly, if they had had them, that would have been great. They would have taken the airfield protections and been in charge of securing the airfields. And the brigade, the army could have concentrated on fighting the battles. That was the thing. The army didn't really understand it in terms of securing airfields. And they were so busy with securing... The, actually, the, the interesting thing is the um, RAF regiment probably been happier about ripping up the airfields than the army were. Because the RAF regiment would have understood the idea of you use it or you lose it. And if you're going to lose it anyway, just to make sure the other guy can't use it. Angus Sonner, what was the English locals on Crete? British friendly? Axis friendly? British friendly. They beat up a lot of Axis troops. Um, Abzaski, what I meant was not lack of ammo, but that Pyrrhus was the only big armor the Allies had in Greece. It was one of the other critical one. Ian Carr, even obviously RF fighters could deal with Ju for do twos and gliders. Where were there also modern? Uh, were there also modern Axis fighters present? Not that many. There really weren't. It was uh, there was a few one more nose, and there were um, Stukas, but not really many of the other fighters because they're moving north for Barbarossa, or they are supporting the Africa Corps. DF, do the Brits actually need heavy guns like 25 pounders? I would imagine that smaller, more portable guns that can pew pew a lot more will be useful be more useful. Actually, the 25 pounders would have been very useful because they their angle profiles and firing profiles would have meant that the, the positions could have almost mutually supported each other with artillery fire. Almost. Not quite. But you could have positioned them along so they could provide long range support and you could have blasted down on the enemy whenever they attacked. And you could have turned the riverbed. For example, with high explosive and 25 pounders, you could have turned the mirror of a bed at Malerma into an absolute death trap. You know, that's the other thing. If you have artillery there, you could turn any of the landing fields. They're going, they're landing in this area. Blast it. And that would have turned into a death trap. Basically, what the British forces and the American forces feared on D-Day when they were landing paratroopers. That if they landed any concentration in any places, the Germans would focus artillery and turn it into a death trap.
Greg Selsky, plowing isn't as effective against gliders as they don't need to take off again. The landing's rough, but plenty of gliders land on plowed fields of D-Day and Arnhem. Yes, but the Germans weren't using a lot of gliders in this operation. They used some gliders in some of the first operation, in the first landings, and some of the first air attacks, but actually, as successive ones went on, the Ju-52s were the critical aircraft, the ones which would land and take off, land and take off. And if you can stop them coming in, hmm, you can stop the resupply flow troops. Because remember, they're not getting any troops by sea. The troops by sea aren't coming. Jeff Bieler, Hargis sets up his brigade with the center well to the East Airfield, which is the primary thing to defend. Why waste the Maoris defending the village of Planus, for example? Honestly, no idea. Uh, he looks like he's defending him from the sea, but then why would you have the engineers in the front of your attack? I I I I I, I, no, I have no idea. I would have had the Maoris far closer. We'll talk about the Maori that in a second. See what? No artillery, and they got the airfield. More like dynamic leadership of the airborne forces must have been thinking at a high speed. Not really. It's actually the British troops abandoned the hill which defends the airfield because they he thinks he's cut, he thinks his units are cut off and surrounded, and he tells them to get back. And the Germans then walk up and take the primary point, which overlooks the airfield, and the counterattack doesn't go until daylight hours the following day. <sighs> Emin, what about instead of sending Force W to Greece, a division is sent to Crete. Force W men and materials plus Finian are kept in Libya to win in North Africa. That would probably secure things, but honestly, that was the plan. Again, uh, I think it was... 6th Division, which 14th Brigade were part of, was supposed to go to Crete. They didn't. DF, other than 1110, what fighter can the Germans in Italy offer to defend bombers? Yet, yeah, the British have seven plates, but do the Germans know that? They don't know that. Um, don't know if anyone, what, uh, Hargis went to the New Zealand PM to get a job over the heads of the Army Chiefs, but he was brave and a good soldier when not crippled by shell shock. He, was, he did quite well. He was quite good at these things. The trouble is, they had to defend, as um, Martin Knox wrote, they wanted to defend the Germans, they couldn't leave Greece unaided, it's all down prestige, British Empire could not be seen to be not aid an ally in a fighting the Germans. Pretty much. They had to do it. They, it was political. Uh, well, so Titan, Titan Tiberius, hello, I can't, I can't imagine a dozen or so of the quad 50s on Crete would have been absolutely savage and a borderline war crime. They would have been useful. Jebula, sending a full division to Crete when more troops were needed on the Greek mainland would not have passed muster with the Greek government. Actually, that was actually the agreement the British had that was to uh, would to put a division there. They just sent them to Greece instead. But actually, the thing is, you should have had the whole 6th division there and the whole of the uh, mobile naval base defense organization. So around about... Ooh, probably the best part of 30,000 troops there. And then you'd have had Freyberg's division probably fall back on there anyway. So you would have ended up with about 50,000 British troops on Crete, in which case they shouldn't have. Uh, even with well, the odds they had, they shouldn't have lost. Paul, threatening the Pelosi oil fields could have changed the course of what? That they would have. Mondok, what was left of the RAF, uh, RAF left Crete and flew to Egypt? Yep. Hang on, where were the Germans invading from? What was their, their base? Their bases were in Greece. They had a few. Oh, I've got them listed somewhere. Um, give me a second. They're just listed up.
The transport aircraft flew from bases near Athens and South Greece, including Eleusis, Teote, Megara, and Corinth. Um, British night bombers attacked the areas in the last few nights before the invasion, and Luftwaffe aircraft eliminated the British aircraft on Crete, is what they often point out. BF 109s and Stuka dive bombs were based forward on airfields at Malawi, Melos, and Carpathos, then Scapento, with current for Argos as base. BF 10s were based at airfields near Athens, Argos, Corinth, all within 200 miles of Crete. And the bomber and reconnaissance machines were accommodating at Athens, Salonika, and detachment at Rhodes. But the J the critical troops to get there are the mountain troops who come aboard the Junkers Ju fifty two, uh, which land and take off. And if you could take out the Junkers, every Junker you take out is very very critical. And it's about forty two thousand troops versus about seven uh about, about versus about fifteen thousand troops. So um yeah, it's embarrassing, Crete. It really is. Right. Paul, don't from Radios and comms never seem to have gotten the focus they deserved. The army had lost comms with first airborne immediately after dropping, and a no plan for how to re-establish them. And that was a problem in World War II. Comms are something which they continue run into issues with. Jeff, the Crete had an Australian brigade and is lacking in a New Zealand brigade. Shows an extreme lack of planning. To an extent, yeah. Um, there are all sorts of weird things. They have a British brigade, they have an Australian brigade, they have two New Zealand brigades. And they have a uh, British um, an ab force, and they have all sorts of other British units attached, and it's it's quite weird. In card, Luftwaffe is easier logistics for reinforcements than the RF, but the totals of aircraft in each force would not have been dissimilar. The fact is, Luftwaffe had them deployed to the region, but Again, this wasn't their primary target in the region. Uh, they were readying for Barbarossa. Mm -hmm. Hang on, Martin Ock. The British could have uh, dragged their feet. They could have told the Greeks that they needed to win in North Africa first or be blunt and tell the Greeks they can't stop a German offensive. Mm, they could have been, but it wouldn't have been good politics. Uh, but reinforcing... That was part of the reason they were on Crete, was to reinforce Crete so that the um, Greeks could send more troops to their own border. Jeff Beeler, a medical assessment deemed Hargrave fit only for service on home front, which he overrode to get his command in actions of a good soldier. The action of a good soldier? Uh, I'm not sure. And frankly, the fact he uses political connections to get it, he's committed to it. But, you know, as you say, on 27th November 1941, when his headquarters was overrun, he had resisted moving his headquarters to a nearby escarpment and incorrectly insisted his orders did not allow him to this latitude. Yeah, he's a bit. Yeah. Can I say yes, but can't find out? I did a lot of research to, to record what if discussion with Dr. Clark for this subject. One is a question from Beckon Kendall. Beckon Kendall. Any references, Danny Freeman? Uh, yep. Mm hmm. So even without the heavy stuff in your port, Crete could have been held. It could have been. It could have been. We're going to get into exactly how it could have been held very shortly. It would have been far easier, far cheaper. And honestly, if you'd done the infrastructure, probably the Germans wouldn't have attacked. This is the thing. You could have probably defeated the Germans by infrastructure. 
Jeff Beale, did the RF in the least have the bombers to base on Creek to attack Pelosi uh, this time? Also, the fighters to defend the base at the time. Uh, the time Malta has three gladiators. No, they don't have the fighters to attack to defend it. And well, I said they have seven, and they have to do it. But here's the thing, Jeff. We all know how love Churchill loves a plan. If you'd held on to Crete for long enough, the bombers would have found their way to there to take part in bombing of the oil fields. And that would have had a really interesting effect on the Germans. Yeah. Um, the, one of the easiest uh, things you could have done is actually leave, put Weston in charge instead of him being perennially the second in command because he's the Royal Marine on site, and let him and his staff, because he actually has a decent sized staff with him, run the things, and leave Freyberg to run the division. So Freyberg can concentrate on fighting the battle. He then has a spare brigade commander with him, which he can use to take over from Hargreaves and turn Hargreaves ground to his chief of staff, which would actually work quite well. And, um, you know, Western would have been sensible. Monarch. During the trouble is that during both the, uh, the evacuation of Greece, a soldier boarding a ship is a soldier, so a fair amount of troops dropped off in Crete were well, not infantrymen, but RA signals. Like, yes, I do agree. And their heavy equipment goes back to Alexandria. But they are actually supposed to go there. It's, it sounds simple, like in the case of this is, must be a manned evacuation. This must be like Dunkirk. They must all be running onto ships without organ. Actually, no, the evacuation of Greece is fairly well organized. It's fairly well planned out. They managed to keep a good, fairly good track of units. And the idea is those units are deployed to Crete, and the idea is their equipment will come and, jack, uh, and track them up. The trouble is the equipment instead sits in Alexandria and isn't sent. And that's the problem. Gone Eagle, what is an MBNDO? Okay. Mobile, naval, base, defense, organization. It's what the Royal Navy had come up with in the interwar years, kind of like the uh, U.S. Marine Corps missile regiments, uh, to defend and create bases wherever they needed them around the world. So they were a force of 8,000 Royal Marines, Royal Navy, engineers, all sorts of things. Everything they needed combined together in one force under one commander to set up a naval base and defend it anywhere in the world. It had heavy anti-aircraft, it had radar, it had an artillery, it had all it needed, was the idea. It was an 8,000-man self-contained unit. The trouble was they only sent 2,200 of them to Suda Bay. If they'd sent all 8,000, Suda Bay would have been boom, as far as the Germans were concerned. And that would have, again, freed up actually most of a brigade to go and help fighting as a mobile reserve. And that's the other thing. Freyberg has no reserve. He has no mobile reserve. And as Daniel Freeman's pointed out, Weston has been on the island longer and is trained for the job of defending, uh, defending an island and coordinating it. And one of the things he keeps badgering on about is building some infrastructure. Ron Fritz, Crete looks small. Could you take an old, 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 old DD or Corvette and beach it to make it an artillery position or even just off the coast? I imagine ships that are small are hard to hit. Actually, sitting in Crete at this point in Suda Bay is HMS Exeter's sister. Yes. The only 8 inch cruiser which. Cunningham had under his command, HMS York, has been damaged and has to be beached in Suda Bay. So she is an artillery position, an air defense position, sitting in Suda Bay. She eventually is taken out, but she does a jolly good job fighting.
Jeff Beeler, 6th Division have been earmarked to deploy to Crete. I think I've said that a few times. Uh, where the 14th Brigade have been based in November, but instead took up positions in Mersamari versus Rommel's attacks. Recently been H headquarters, Western Desert Force. Yeah. Angus Sonnen, were there any British forces left behind to be captured? Yes, an uh, entire brigade was captured. Inca, why was the Italian convoy not intercepted? Had the RN by then withdrawn from Norfolk Creek by then? They were evacuating. So the decision was made that, frankly, rather than fight the battle, they let them for uh, they were uh, their job. Their primary mission was evacuation of the army at this point. So that's what the and that's what they were going for. And the Italians managed to sneak around, basically. And the British were uh, the Royal Navy weren't hunting, but the, they destroyed both German attempts. Damn it. Uh, uh, Don Doc. Okay. Uh, Doc. Okay. I'll, as Dr. Scott, why not send only the 6th Australian to Greece while 2nd NZ goes to Crete with all its men and material? Again, that would be sensible. The 6th, or, uh, 6th Division was actually um, British Division as well. Then again, Ian Carr, the, the RN was in evacuation mode by, that, by then. Also, the Italians were very well uh, were very well lead ships from the Rhodes Command, which had already defeated a British attack in the Dardanelles. Uh, yes, but the British they defeated a small attack, and the the British forces heavy there were quite a lot heavier. If they'd really wanted to, the British at one point have battleships and everything going around Crete, and they would have kept that up. Brent Campbell, I was, uh, sorry, I was asking whether the British left commandos to fight on after the evacuation or whether they were sent to help the Persians later. They had set up, been setting up SOE in Crete since before November, 19, for, uh, before November 1940. Uh, in fact, they were part of Western's plan for defence of the island. Mm-hmm. Jeff Hiller, would Bomber Harris have sent his precious heavy bombers to Crete? If he would, if if there'd been a chance to bomb airfields and be sent to um uh, win Churchill's praise. Brenkhound, don't think any of the airstrips were suitable for heavy bombers, and they certainly didn't have enough bombs for them. Not in nineteen forty one, uh, May in May nineteen forty one, but if they had kept hold of Crete, reinforced it and strengthened it, over time you'd have probably found heavy bombers turn up. Emin, did the Creeks build any fortifications in Crete before the war? And could they have kept one or two regiments from their 5th Division? Or could they have evacuated more Greek soldiers? If they could have evacuated more Greek soldiers, that would have helped. And... Honestly, they the whole point was the British would send their division in there so that the Greeks could keep, take 5th Division north. And they had some fortifications, not many, but some. William Cox, where did Creek get its fuel? How crucial was fuel for defenders? Honestly, they didn't have enough motor transport to actually really worry too much about the fuel. That's the thing. But they did get their fuel. And actually, that was one of the reasons why they knew about Sufrax, because, as I said, I keep saying, they had looked into bringing fuel into Suda Bay, but also into bringing into Sufrax. I was asking, a big what if. What if O'Connor was not captured along other commanders in April and they were all available during Bre a Greece campaign? Uh, you might have had a better commander out there, but honestly, Freyberg is a quite good commander. He just has no staff. Everything rebomb was great. Hurricane could, certainly could have taken them, but the air force in the theater didn't have heavies. Oh, Richard York was eight inch. Exodus near sister. She was technically Exodus sister, but they were built so far apart in a design development they looked slightly different. See one. Uh, long run generally remarked that the German airborne casualties so high Hitler never used them for airborne operations again. Battle of Bulge, disruptive operations accepted. Pretty much, yep. And also, the reason I keep advocating for the abandonment of Greece is so British uh, British could win the campaign in Libya instead of losing both Greece and North Africa, concentrate on winning one battle. 
That's the sensible, logical, strategic situation to make on those commands. Um, but the trouble is you win long wars by actually showing your allies what caliber you're made of and that you're prepared to fight for them. And that was the case with Greece. That was good. Uh, that's fine. I was trying to find information on Weston. Was he from the right background to command, e.g. educated at Eton, Harrow, Westminster? I'm honestly not sure. Um, his son also goes on to have senior command in the Royal Marines, and he seems to be a very experienced Royal Marine commander. I think that's more the problem, that he's a Royal Marine commander and he is known to be Cunningham's man. So they're worried that it would be the Navy taking over Crete. But seeing as the Navy are the critical ones for defending Crete, even supplying a squadron of the one of one of the squadrons of uh, of fighters of defending Crete was actually a Royal Navy squadron. So this is the thing: Crete is being defended by the Navy because the Navy need Crete. If the Navy if Crete remains, then the Navy is so much more secure in the Eastern Mediterranean. With Crete, their their life is made tremendously easier. Jerison, it must suck so much that your leaders have surrendered you without permission. If my unit surrendered, I would be missing and in hiding. Probably. Okay. I think I almost caught up. Um, War of Titan. The US Marines had the defense battalions, but they lacked organic infantry units. Pretty much the MMDO is that, but with organic infantry units and everything else added in. You got any different side uh, is that uh, the part facing their biggest military threat there is flat. Crete doesn't even have that excuse. Um... Well, yeah, actually, no. no the, the, the North Shore is the flattest part of Crete. That's the trouble. That's why all the airfields are there. Oh. Jerison, why did the York class have two less turrets? Was it a weight thing? Did the Yorks have more machinery or electronics? It was a weight thing. They had the same amount of machinery and electronics. And the idea was that you could get uh, what was an almost as good a county class with a similar speed and operator profiles for a lot less weight, so you could build more of them on the treaty limits. And it was found, well, let's be honest, they build only two and then they've built town class cruisers. So that shows you how successful it was. Mm hmm. Denhops, uh, cheap mass produced cruiser for colonial work prior to London. Basically, they were a type B heavy cruiser. Well, Titan Tiberius, Dr. Clark, if you could have a regimental sized unit of your dreams in Friend Crete, what would it be? Um, it's mountainous terrain. I'll take a regiment of Gurkhas, thank you very much. Or. I'm presuming you're meaning regimental in American size formation, so a brigade. A Gurkha brigade would have been quite good. Thank you very much. If I could have had a Gurkha brigade there, I'd have been a very happy man. Amen. Oh, thank you. I was just wondering if the Greek government would have left one regiment to defend their territory instead of relying solely on that. They did lead some troops there. They didn't, and they evacuated some there as well. The trouble is they were quite disorganized. Rishi, Dr. Clark, what would have been Crete's potential if it was held? If it was held, you could have bombed. Well, basically, if it was held, you could control the eastern Mediterranean. You could make any resupply of Malta from the east a lot, lot easier. In fact, it would have been very practical. You could have pretty much cut off uh, resupply of 
of, of Axis forces in Libya. All almost, you know, they, let's see. Algeria, Morocco. Yeah, they're just, uh, their forces would have either had to come via past Malta or come past Crete. And so either way, you could have stopped those convoys. So if you had controlled Crete, you could have won North Africa. This is the thing. You could have settled North Africa with securing Crete. Mainland Greece was blitzed by this time. Um, Calvin Gansford. I was asking, Polish Carpathian Brigade. Uh, if I could have picked a second brigade, then it would be the Polish Carpathian Brigade on top of that. And then it would be... Again, for beach events, I want the Monab, MMDO out there. And the Australian New Zealanders do very, are very fine troops. They're very good at fighting. I'd have quite happily had them. I'd have just given them a slightly better organisation. Daniel Freeman, uh, you have just said that they might uh, they might melt in the heat about the poles. Uh, not possibly essentially. Plus, Gurkhas are so small that they can easily be stored, transported aboard ship. You might want to hide now. You know, there could be some angry Gurkhas after you. Uh, Airman, Dr. Clark, what was the role of the Greek Navy in Battle Creek? Not much. They tried their best, but they didn't have many units left. We'd all like homer tanks, uh, hover tanks, but you know. Um, the last British reinforcements arrive in Crete on the 16th of May. So they are getting troops deployed in there till the 16th of May. So if we consider this, if we go back. The British evacuations from Greece end on the 29th of April. So that's when pretty much evacuations from Greece have ended. All right. And they've already worked out how many troops they need to defend there. The Crete. I'm going to go through here. The reinforcements of Crete don't end till the 16th of May. And there will be more troops coming afterwards. So there is plenty of time. There is more than two weeks to get troops which have come from Greece to Alexandria back to Crete. There is two weeks to sort your mess out. Two weeks. You can sail. To Alexandria, to Crete in a day or so. Less than that. But let's say you're going slowly. You can get there. Just, mm, why not? It just seems you've got the troops sitting back in Alexandria. You might as well reinforce them. You've got their equipment sitting in Alexandria. Just send their equipment out. Third squad, am I right in thinking that the Croatian population made controlling Crete incredibly difficult? I remember hearing about Gorilla's War from now on. Controlling Crete, uh, the, uh, Crete without the permission of the Crete, uh, of the Cretans is incredibly difficult, yes. Basically, anyone there is there because they accept you. Back in Canada, the RN didn't rate the Greek Navy. Highly expect ABC would have asked them to stay out of the way. No, he was quite prepared to use them. They were very useful for convoy escorts and those things. He didn't want them... They had a very different doctrine when it came to fighting battles, so he preferred not to use them for fleet operations. But for convoy operations, he could work with them, and he did use them quite a lot for convoy ops. But as Dana Freeman, as I've said as well, there isn't much of the Greek Navy left at this point. Jeff Bieler, would you say Brigadiers Hungus and Inglis are the type of officer Monty would sack when he saw their World War One medals? Um, possibly. But probably Monty wouldn't have sacked them. He'd have probably found a way to employ them elsewhere with their talents. Breaking down, 10 hours at 30 knots there and back. A lot of unhappy engineers afterwards, though. Which is why I said, you know, give it a day, go at a nice leisurely 12 knots or 18 knots. 
You really don't. You, you could you could do it, it as said, a little over day. Go at 10 knots. It'll take you 30 hours there and back. No, Scott. Uh, overnight run. Repairs and Alex during the day. Pretty much that was the plan to reinforcing. That was their operationals. So, let's go to this. So, this is the operational plan for 5th Brigade, the positions at Malami. Okay, so you have the Maori Battalion. Now, Let's say you still want to defend the, vi uh, the, the village of Palanis. Let's say you do. I still think you can take C Company out of the Maori Battalion. I think you can take C Company out of the 21st Battalion. And I think you can take C Company out of the 23rd Battalion. And using these three C Companies, you can reinforce C Company at the airfield and cover the other side of the River, the Tavaronis. It is a dry riverbed. If you are covering both sides of the riverbed, then there's no ch they, they, you should hopefully be able to suitably enfilade the enemy position and stop them landing there, because that is what happens. They land in the riverbed. Then, twenty second battalion's commander thinks his units are cut off. So he withdraws D Company and A Company. He loses control of point 107, the hill, which commands the airfield. And the counterattack fails to succeed to get it back. But honestly, this is the dispositions which decide the fate of the entire island. I've worked some Nepalese at Friendly Park Hospital and seem to have a lot of retired ones near where I live. Plus, looked after another population. Good people. Um, Eamon, how was the doctrine different? At least, didn't they lose the uh, George's Alvinoff? Uh, the doctrine different was in terms of the command. Uh, British command destroyers were trained to be far more independent in their thinking and... For operations of fleet operations, there was a change in how you coordinated and controlled your air defense. It just, it weren't, they weren't major things, but they were big enough that they would cause trouble in a fleet operation, whereas you could quite sensibly use them to do the convoy operations and free up units for the fleet operations, which wouldn't have any problems. It was a simple logistic, sort of logistical issue. Don't forget that 22 Battalion had two companies from 27 Battalion, which was a divisional machine gun battalion supporting them at their field. Oh, yes, they do have those as well. So they have uh, two of those companies. That's good. Deputized the local farmers to stand in the riverbed and use their shotguns like they were shooting at birds during harvest season. You could do so many things. You could literally just plow it. Just plow it. That's all. That's the new motto. Just plow it. I don't know. Jeff Yellow, would you say you need more than one battalion defending that airfield, and that would be a good spot for your brigade HQ and the cute village, uh, not the cute village of Planet and Planet? Well, actually, here's the thing: the brigade HQ, and we open this again. Brigade HQ isn't in Battalion. The Brigade HQ is in Darkiston, I think. Yeah. The Brigade HQ is in Dark in Darkiston, in the centre. It's in 23 Battalion's territory. Again, I do not answer... I, I don't understand the positioning of the engineering detachment. I do not understand the positioning of the 28th Maori Battalion. I do not understand why you have given such a huge area of such critical importance to one battalion. 
But if you are going to do that, as I said, move some companies. That's all you need to do. You can take one company from each of the three remaining battalions and you can turn that airfield into impossible to take. Um, don't, don't assume the main defense defenses also included a dozen 40 million bofers and they had a few tanks there too. Yes, they had lots of equipment at Malem. It was understood it was important, but you have no aircraft. So rip up the ground, or if you are going to keep it, actually secure the airfield properly, because as you can see, under this case, the airfield is one corner of your defensive position, one corner. And the rest of your brigade is all stretched out far away from it. When we all know how critically important that airfield was. Honestly, again, you could have brought the Maori battalion back along to the engineering battalion's place. Still covered both those bridges, probably, with the Maori battalion. And then brought the engineering attachment back entirely into 22nd Battalion's area and used the engineering detachment instead of securing the area to rip up the airfield and the ground. That's it. Or, I don't know, get some of those lovely attached Greeks you've got to rip up the ground. William Cox, also provide um, tactical planning, model one mindset. Well, you see, the thing is, people tell me that he's deploying to defend against the sea attack and amphibious assault. In what world do you put your engineering detachment front line to take on an amphibious assault? You don't. And honestly, it looks like to me, 23rd Battalion are deployed in defensive positions. But honestly, shouldn't they be the Brigade Reserve if they're in that position? Or if they're not, if it is for a sea attack, then is 21st Battalion a sea at the defensive reserve? You know, which, which, this is just, this is, okay. I think he was doing the best job he could, but I honestly don't think he really understood what he was there to defend. And I'm fairly sure, actually, the thing is that they all tried to explain it. But the trouble is there's no staff. So Freyberg can only be in one place at a time. He's not no staff officers. Even when, if you're a area commander, you usually have quite senior colonels. Who can wander out? If you're a divisional officer, a major general, you will have quite senior colonels who you can wander out. Your chief of staff, maybe your head of artillery, your logistics, engineering officer, all these people you can send out. And a senior engineer or a colonel turns up to next to the brigade commander and looks and goes, Are you quite sure about these positions, sir? And a brigade commander goes, okay. And if the brigade commander doesn't know anything, that colonel goes back to the divisional commander. And next day, a major general turns up and goes, Ah, oh, Grist, what in the name of all things holy have you done? You were ordered to secure the freaking airfield, man. So the trouble is, it's the lack of a staff. It, it That's the, the biggest change I would make is actually putting a proper staff there. You could have solved so many problems with a decent staff. Dirt Squad, did engineers have landmines? If so, plan mine airfield. Cover it uh, from the nearby hills to help with occasional suppressing fire. Yeah, they had landmines. Not many, but enough that it could have been used for certain things. Jerison, well, Royal Marine engineers have posted docks at Dover to demolish any infrastructure. Yeah. Brennan Command, the world where you don't have enough real troops to do it? Well, that's the trouble. He has four battalions of real troops. If it's so desperate that the engineering detachment is having to do this, then you've got a problem. Or you need to reduce the area. What's artillery? He has mortars and he has machine guns. He has a couple of Matilda tanks, I think, dug in somewhere around there. And 
you know, that's it pretty much. He, I'm not sure if he has access to his auto. Let me look and check his order of battle. Um, he ha doesn't have artillery. He does have a, have the first Greek regiment and the Evelpidan Officers Academy. So he has about fourteen hundred, no, uh, thirteen hundred fifty Greeks to support him. So he has plenty of troops. He plus has the New Zealand Field Punishment Centre, which has another couple of hundred. He has the Nineteenth Army Field Corps Company. Support him. He's actually a very heavily reinforced unit. So he has four battalions plus an extra battalion equivalent of Greeks, honestly. Oh, almost two battalion equivalent of Greeks. But the airfield is supposed to be the primary thing he's defending, and it's what Freyberg, it's what Wilson, it's what Wavell, it's what Weston have all emphasized to the commanders. So I'm sorry, this might just be me, but in my world, I would have collapsed the Maori battalion up to where the engineering detachment is. I'd have put the engineering detachment where the 23rd battalion is, and I'd probably put the 23rd battalion on the other side of the riverbed to secure the airfield from that flank. Take care, Brecken. Thank you. Um, Jay Bill, it's hard as defending the mighty port of Palantis. Uh, yes, Palantis and um, Malerme. But Malerme is the primary thing he's supposed to be defending. The staff, Angus and the staff have to be officers. Um, it can be senior NCOs as well. There often is a mixture of senior sergeant majors and um, warrant officers and colonel and senior officers, but and junior officers as well. It's often a mixture of the two. But it's let's put it this way: if you're managing a brigadier, then usually you want either a sergeant major or a colonel, and one of those is more polite than the other. Mondok, looks like, what was the manning of the battalions as they had been chased out of Greece and saw very heavy fighting? So they had two weeks to get defences done. Units reorganised, fit in replacements. Um, they're most, they're not complete strength, but they're not low. They're not, the most of these battalions are actually quite good strength. And as I said, they have the Greeks there. They're, they're, I'd say they're running at about, there are various estimates. Some estimates go they're running at 40% strength. Some go they're 100% strength. My own reckoning, because of the way things have been going backwards and forwards, and the resupplies, and the fact that they've got two New, Ze two New Zealand brigades which have been strengthened up, and the Australian brigade and the British brigade, I would say they're running at about 70 to 80%. Thank you, Freeman. Dirt Squad. Getting a good portion of J-52s would also badly hurt the German war effects more broadly. They didn't have that like, many of them, no. Definitely. Steel Panther Radio. I read Beaver's Creek, and it had some stuff about German planes landing and crashing into their own landing planes. Airfield should have been blocked with uh, blockaded with obstacles. Yes, that would be good. Or just plowed up. Just plow it. Just plow it, plow it, plow it. Just plow it, plow it, plow it. That sounds so bad, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. In the context of Crete. Derp Squad, Daniel Freeman. Even getting one or two would mean that each time an exploded, uh, uh, that each time one exploded, landings would have been suspended to sweep for mines again. Yes, a few mines, anything in there uh, would have hurt the Ju 52s. 
Paul, just like, could Freiburg have been under pressure from other sources not to destroy your fields are effect? <sighs> yes and no. They probably wouldn't have liked it, but they would have had to accept it. In a nice way, if they're telling him they're going to withdraw the aircraft, and that's why the aircraft... Freiburg sends the aircraft home partially because the Air Force are asking for them. So he sends the aircraft away. So if the air aircraft, if the air force are abandoning their air bases, Paul Johnson, let's talk. Were any senior commanders sacked early in the war? It just seems to be one failure after another. Not really. Mainly because everyone looking at the crate afterwards are sort of going, uh... and also sacking. The only one who could possibly have been sacked, arguably, were 5th Brigade and 22nd Battalion's commander. And they aren't. And they actually end up being captured not long after in the war. So, you know. Jeff Beeler, what proportion of Allied forces were ad hoc units? Seems like most of them were except 14th Brigade. They all had a mixture of ad hoc units, um, to extent, well, one to extent or another ad hoc, but they were mostly working together quite well and quite homogenous. Judgment, we had a lovely sergeant major and a colonel who had, spent, uh, who had the sergeant major syndrome, not allowed within six inches of grass. Ooh. Paul Johnson, I don't think anyone was sacked, but there was a general rejig of those, especially the right at the top in the Middle East Command. Yep. That's good. I know garrisons didn't have much artillery, but did they have mortars actually? They have some mortars, but not enough. Again, the mortars went in a different ship. William Cox, plow, just plowed. In the line of field with guns and wow, it shooting the gliders coming, shooting it on, on to juice. Kill the, yeah. Just plow it. That's a good song. Um, Daniel Freeman, Jeff Beeler, the NC force was established but lacked divisional HQ and had additions. They were composite Australian units uh, running around and Greek forces seem to have all been provisional. It, you need a decent staff. If you have a decent staff, you can start sorting out a lot of problems with the Greeks and a lot of problems with the rest of the troops. Hello? They can't see you. The camera's not at that angle. Excuse me a second. Thank you. Oh, Bacon Sani has arrived. Mm. Cool. Golden Eagle. How did the Germans win? Um, well, there's a reason I haven't talked about them much, because really, if it hadn't been for Merlin, mate, the Germans wouldn't have won. The Germans were grossly underestimating the British forces there. They were consistently underestimating the level of opposition they face. They were overestimating the support they get from the... They thought the Cretans would greet them as rescuers. Um, yeah, it was, uh, the Germans were, the Germans had a lucky break because the Brits, well, the 22nd Brigade, uh, the 22nd Battalion made a mistake and it happened. And that's the trouble. It did happen. Hmm. I don't know. Paul Johnson. Fredberg was one of Churchill's pals. He had been wounded seven times in World War I and actually carried uh, out the last cavalry charge World War I. Cool. I know. And he was a decent he was a decent commander.
Karen Freeman, the Allied forces beat the Germans and erased the bomb. The German aims uh, plans were awful, but probably saved by the Al Alpine troops. General um, general taking over command on day two to three. Yes, um, the German mountain troops getting in there, thanks to the JU-52s. Because remember, mountain troops were not glider troops. They weren't paratroopers. They had to be flown in by the JU-52s onto those lovely airfields, which on the Malami airfield, which was lovely and flat and able to take them and not plowed at all. And from there, they managed to fight their way through. Mike, Mike, what was his reaction force? It seems like a very static plan. He didn't have any. Freyberg didn't have any reaction force. He didn't have the... Tr Freyberg couldn't achieve it because he didn't have the motorized transport to keep the motor to move them around properly. And so he relied on each brigade to set up its own reaction force. And the trouble is, Hargus doesn't really set up a reaction force in his area. Cox, what were Crete's chances of being home to large bombers? How long was the strip? Even without a squadron of Ca Catalinas, might have been nice. You could have made a long enough strip quite easily. You could have made it, Malerme especially, could have been made, and Hurricane could have both been made quite easily into airfields for heavy bombers. Keeping those heavy bombers supplied would have been another matter, but it could have been none. Um, Steel Panther 88, what was the story of Freiburg and allegedly ignoring Ultra Decrypts? Uh, ultra decrypts? Any truth in that? No. He didn't ignore the information he got given. He did the best he could with it. But the trouble is... <clears throat> a brigade, a divisional or task force or anything like commander like that can only be in one place at a time. When you're in a brigade... To be honest, a brigade commander is the lowest level, the highest level really, at which you can be a sort of one-man band. You can be a sort of one-man band in that you can visit all your units fairly quickly yourself if you want to. But divisional command, you need a staff because you have multiple brigades you have to keep an eye on with multiple battalions. Above divisional, you are definitely need a staff. If you want to actually do your command job and also keep an eye on what your units are doing, you need a staff. And he didn't have them. Seals to Pampa. Plying the airfields wouldn't be hard work in the Cretan weather. I hope they had some donkeys or dragons there. They did have lots of donkeys there. And lots of farmers. Yeah, Peter, imagine if the 28th Maori Battalion had been on the airfield the 22nd. Imagine if any of those battalions would be on there until the 22nd, so there'd have been two battalions in there. Or if... And here's the really cool thing. 
Imagine there's another battalion sitting the other side of the of the of the riverbed. So when the Germans land in the riverbed, they've suddenly got a battalion attacking from each side. Mike, Mike, Daniel Freeman, with no artillery and no reaction force, that was a very large area to cover with what he had. At least, I'm out. How was he doing supply wise? Mm. Mm. Sorry about that. Well, for 5th Brigade. As you can see, if you look at the scale, they are covering an area which is roughly six miles by three miles. So 18 square miles, not including the, the large amount of which is water. Um, Freiburg actually has quite good supplies coming in. They are all sitting down at Suda Bay because he doesn't have the motor transport to move them. So for what he has, he actually does have supplies for it. He just can't move those supplies. It's just, it's that situation. And this is another thing which the Royal Navy are doing. It's one of the things which is interesting. It's never included in the Battle of Crete narrative. But my good friend Jamie on about it quite regularly, and he and I have actually recorded a video at one point on this. Um, I'm not sure if it's come out yet. Operation MAQ3. And please go and look up Jamie's. There's a link down below to it and the thing. But H basically, um, this is another example of what's going on at Crete. So this is why I'm not as down on the Air Forces in terms of, I understand why they're because the fleet air arm on HMS Formidable Paper Air Group is, well, it's about 42 strong, the Paper Air Group. The real Air Group is they have 27 aircraft left, of which 18 are operable, and they, theoretically, they tried to form a strike group of 12, and that turns into a strike group of 8. This is what's happening on an aircraft carrier, which has been intensive operations for 90 days with minimal supplies. Imagine what it's like for the aircraft retreating from Greece and retreating in uh, operating in North Africa. Jeff Biela, given the close proximity of mainland Greece airfields, how viable is Crete as an air base in the long term? It would have been interesting, but like Malta, if you'd wanted it, you could have kept it going. And it could have caused a lot of trouble for the Germans. Uh, it would have been worth it, is the, the, question, is the answer. Jeff Beale, and Daniel Freeman, Jeff Beale, Melian was closest to mainland Greece, but Herakon is 170 miles east of there, and 170 kilometers east of there. That is not too different from dispersal airfields, at least from the UK in Battle of Britain. Yeah. And there is always the chance of building some airfields on the southern side of Crete. I know that might seem strange, but actually in wartime, you have a lot more support for these sort of things. And there are spaces, not including one not too far from Sufrax, where you could actually put in a fighter airfield. So you could have set up fighters there and put radars on the northern shore and use that as your air defense. That's called Daniel Freeman. Are you trying to annoy every former British Columbia hiding? One side? If so, Falklands should be one of the easy of all those sheep. 
Good Lord. Daniel Freeman, stop being cruel. Jill Shake, what was the British intelligence assessment of German air capacity before, uh, capability before Crete? And did the British military think it was a viable attack option prior to Crete? Um, they knew the thanks to Ultra, thanks to Enigma Decrypts, they knew exactly the German order of battle and the German plan. So their intelligence assessment was pretty much this is what's going to happen. And there's lots of debates over whether or not they could have used Ultra to predict it. But the thing was, the brigade commander of 5th Brigade was saying that I have co I've got control of Malame, I've got control of this one. He doesn't even understand that control of Malame wasn't the important thing. Control of Malame airfield was the important thing. Davila, was Freiburg too focused on defending Suda Bay? It's a huge number of defenders compared to Malame Airfield. To an extent, but also Malame ha Suda Bay ha is quite a large, it's a larger area than Malame. And it's also got all these logistics in it. It's got all this supply dump in. And it's mostly got the Mayor Western and his headquarters in, which is what Freiburg is also having to use pretty much. Steel Panther idea. It seems the best way to defend the islands is with occasional RN support, and most importantly, Air Force cover. Maybe the RF was overstretched at the time, though. The RF was very overstretched at the time. I was asking. Also remember that at that point, the German paras jumped with a handgun, maybe an occasional SMG. After landing, they had to reach their KR-98, K, MG, and ammo. They were dropped separately. Again, this is why if you have control of both sides of the riverbed, they aren't getting much. Jeff Eiler, how much better was Malta's defensive infrastructure compared to Greet? A whole... A whole different thing. Crete. They, they have infrastructure for starters. They, they have infrastructure. And plows. Infrastructure and plows. So, Panther, with hindsight, it seems Crete was most useful with while Greece was still in the fight against Axis, but less useful after Greece falls. No, it would still it would actually have been even more useful after Greece falls because that would have enabled you to, especially if you could have put some fighters there and uh, you already had a radar there. If you'd been able to maintain a fighter force there, they could have interdicted with a lot of the air attacks from the Dodecanese and the Greek islands uh, and Greece against uh, against convoys and naval operations in the eastern Mediterranean. So you could have freed up a lot of assets. And made a lot of uh, made things a lot safer for operations in the Eastern Mediterranean, which would have then stopped off cut off supply for the Africa Corps and the Italians in North Africa, which basically they'd have been forced to withdraw to supplying things through Algeria because they wouldn't have been able to supply them through Libya to Libya at all, and that would have been able to force them back. So you could have done a very successful thing if you kept control of Crete. Right, I'm going to finish at 8.30 because whilst I've had a very nice bacon sandwich, that is the sum total of my um, food really today, and I fancy ordering a takeaway. So I'm going to finish at 8.30 so I can order myself a takeaway before I take the fluffy research assistant for a walk. I'm sorry about that, but actually having that has made me more hungry rather than less hungry. Especially as, at the moment, I am expecting to have to be up again all night because I'm sure the, little thin end of it, the individuals who keep trying to get up into the um, scaffolding will not be put off by a little bit of wind. At least they weren't last night.
Dear Scott, I don't know who. So then the question is asked at Dunkirk, is that your own? Where the, that was the RAF? Um, they were doing the Battle of Britain. That was their primary operations. Steel Panther 88. Crete was perfectly useful under with, uh, useful with Greek uh, under German control. You can raid Romanian air oil fields from there, and it helps secure the Eastern Med. That's I pretty much said. Steel Panther 88. The problem with the air force with air force was I think getting all the planes from England into Med across all the hostile area. Not so fast or easy trip. I recommend they have to be taken round on ship, loaded on ship, and taken round Africa. That's the easiest way to get them there. I'm thinking McDonald's tonight. Richard Hughes. Thank you. Chinese or pizza? Thank you, McDonald's. Jeff Beeler, been an interesting discussion. It has. Crete is one of those interesting operations. And as I said, there are three points at which it could be changed. There are three points which. In November, you could change it by building in some infrastructure. Literally, if you start doing infrastructure building in November, you could do a lot of changes. Then when you're evacuating from Greece, if you actually remember to, or when you're evacuating from Greece and reinforcing from Alexandria, you could actually take the heavy equipment and the, uh, you know, the staff with you. Those things would, either of those options would have helped. And then if you go right up to the tactical operation, you can move one battalion or three companies and reinforce one of the battalions and just cover the other side of the riverbed so that the Germans, when they try to get into the riverbed, are going to be enfiladed by fire, machine gun and rifle fire from both sides. It's that simple. Service squad, spread some olive oil around the top level of the scaffolding. It'll be washed away by morning. No evidence they didn't just slip and fall. Mm. I have a mother and sister who both believe in being good and kind, so they wouldn't allow me to do that. Trust me. I had plans for the washing up soap last night. Calvin Gans went, Doctor, you might borrow something pointy from Kalia Drak. Um, I'm relying on carbon tree tools. And also, my girlfriend has sent me a very, very cool new hoodie. Um, which I'm wondering if they are, if they turned out they're actually drunks, uh, could actually scare the life out of them, because I think it's it's toothless. So, you know. Basically, she's winding up the big kid of me. Which is quite fun. Yes. Uh, I, I have a fun scenario in that I like cartoon movies because they're a good way to relax. And so I do spend quite a lot of time watching them. And I like those books. The, the um, whole series of books which the How to Train Your Dragon movies are based on the How to Train Your Dragon books are very, very cool. If anyone's got kids, they are sort of, i say I started reading them about seven, eight. Um, they are a good series. I honestly, I preferred them to Harry Potter. I liked Harry Potter, but I preferred them. Jeff mm. I would put the blame on Brigadier Hargis and Inglis for political using political influence to, to, to influence to themselves in positions. They should have gone to younger men. Agree or not? To an extent, you are forced to that assumption, but honestly, I don't like to proportion blame to them because there are so many other factors which could have been done, which could have made their lives a lot easier. You know, if there had been a if there had been a proper staff, there would have been a very different scenario, and they could be remembered as heroic defenders and the victors of Malami. 
it could be remembered as the operation where the Allies beat, uh, where the Brits beat the German paratroopers. Jeff Hill, infrastructure could have been built by local cretins, I think. It could have been, but they didn't really have the need or resources for it. But it could have been. If you had started building in November, it's amazing what you could have done. Um, and off topic, but how would Crete have been held, uh, have been held, have changed Greek politics post-war? Oh, Crete would have become the Greek heartland that held out throughout World War II and would have been the headquarter. The Greek, the, the Greek government in exile would have basically stayed on Crete for the entire time. And it would have been also interesting because with it there, just there, instead of concentrating on being freedom fighters, you might well have had Greeks, a lot of Greeks, trying to escape to Crete and from Crete to um, form up into the Greek free Greek army and that sort of thing. Hmm. That's good. That's right. As Duncan Freeman said, Battle of Britain was over and the Blitz needed bow fighters, not hurricanes. Yeah, but you have to tell the RAF that. And at that point, they're still in Battle of Britain under siege mode. Uh, yes, I am teaching remotely Steel Pan for 80. In fact, I taught a few classes today. It's why sometimes I had duties on Mondays or rather than Tuesdays. Jerison, wait, did you say the fees returned? Uh, yeah, we've been having people being very interesting around our house last night. We had a lot of very weird things going on. Seemed, uh, we reckon we had someone sitting in our greenhouse for quite an hour, a while last night. After We weren't sure about it last night, but when I went out there today, we put flour and things down and, you know, we could tell someone had been in there. So, yeah, another email, uh, uh, chat with the, uh, the policeman who's dealing with the case. My mic. Would having one destroyer providing offshore artillery support have been helped enough? Lack of artillery maneuver forces stresses me out. Not probably in daytime. In nighttime, they could have been. They would have been very useful. And in nighttime, they were doing that. You know, they they were trying to do it. Again, guess which unit could talk with the Navy best? Oh, it wouldn't be the MNBDO. And which unit had the best radios? The MNBDO. So which unit would have probably been most sensible to have been running the show? And then you could have left Freyberg in charge of his division, which would have made sense because he knew his divisional commanders best. And he could have used an extra brigadier to replace Hargris. If he needed to. Which possibly he would have. Or he could have used that brigadier as his chief of staff. An extra uh, wandering around. Mundo, Crete was the death of the German airborne forces, meaning no invasion of Malta, and also of Luftwaffe transport force that also impacted on Stalingrad airlift. Yep. Hopefully, the, well, Jerich, the scaffold was supposed to go down today. It's been up for eight weeks now. And um, it was supposed to go down today, but it was too high wind, so they didn't. So it's up again for another night. So I have another sleepless night ahead of me. Yes, I see. How much would it cost to hire private security for a week? Hopefully it goes down tomorrow. So hopefully we don't need to do that. But honestly, I, I have a suspicion over who it might be. And I will, uh, 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 over who's doing it. I do have a strong suspicion, but, you know, that's off topic. I do have a dog. I have a research assistant, and he's very good. He woofs and tells me where they, uh, things are.
My Mike, uh, there was, uh, don't know from my mic, there was actually reasonable amounts of British A in Crete. Malerme had two three inch guns, 10 40 millimeter guns. Mm. They were quite well armed with air defense. Flick the wrong, uh, pre, uh, uh, flick the wrong thing. <laughs> Dirt Squad, um, you'd think that Churchill, being would be a navy man, would have liked the idea of Western the Royal Marine being in command, being a navy man after all. <sighs> he doesn't seem to have got involved in that. He just seems to nick the commanders, and even Weston himself gets nicked. He goes and serves on the Ordnance Board. After this, he goes and serves, you know, on the ordnance board. I'm not sure why. I mean... I have no idea what that is. Oh, well. No, I'm thinking possibly the. Well, let's put it this way: we've had the, our roof has been a long saga involving a couple of contractors, and the first ones didn't exactly leave under happy circumstances. But you don't know; it could be me as casting aspersions. So I, you know, it's just a suspicion because, again, climbing up in scaffolding is not something which. Well, in the nicest way, it's not like we're on the high street where there's lots of people who are pished walking past. So, um, yeah, we're quite a long way up. And so, could Crete have been saved in 1941? It could have been saved in 1940, and could have been saved in two different ways in 1941. So I think that answers those questions. Any other questions before I go? Because it's about seven minutes. Mm. And Danny Freeman, Mike, Mike, uh, Danny Freeman, Mike, Mike, while the area around Suda, China had 16 or so 3.7 inch, several quad 0.5 MGs, 10 3 inch guns, and uh, 16 bofers. Sheffield, I find it sad. Hargus gets away and Campbell gets captured. I do too. Campbell does a good job. Um, Paul, don't, Germany couldn't allow threat to uh, policy authors, particularly uh, prior to Barbarossa. If the first time first, surely they just go again. Look at the Dirkanese later. What would come again? That's the thing. The, the, for the Germans to move, they would have to come over the sea. They would have to launch an amphibious operation. Because if they lose in the first attack, they lose all their, they still lose all their air attack troops. It's the mountain troops who win the battle, not the airborne. The airborne have been mostly chewed up and spat out, other than at Malerme. So if they lose all the airborne troops, then that means they have to come by sea. That's going to take months to form up a proper naval force to do it. And while you're doing that, the Royal Navy is going to be formed, that has formed up. And honestly, if you aren't doing the evacuation of Crete, which exposes the Navy quite so much because they're having to pull people out during the daytime and they can still keep operating around at nighttime, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble and you're going to have to deal with submarines and all sorts of things. And the longer you take to form it up, the more likely you are to find that you have a lot of troops facing you. And it's going to be more organised.
William Cox, what are Harbour facilities like in Korea time? Suda Bay is good. Safrax is okay. The main bases are on the north, but you can get some ports opening on the south. Don Fritz, can Brit forces take the cars already on Crete to make a Busedo motorized force? There aren't that many cars on Crete. There really aren't. Uh, not sure there was some too much, uh, there was much motor transport on Crete among natives, to be honest, and anything driving in the day would be shot up while there was only one road. It was slight there was slightly more than one road, but only one road which could take lorries. Think what it's got here late, don't worry. From the German peers' view, do you have any info on what losses they expected? I'm assuming lower than they took. A lot lower. They were expecting losses in the region of 10 to 15 percent, is from what two sources I've seen have said. But again, I, I, I have a feeling they a student was probably lower, playing down the likelihood of losses anyway to try to get permission for his uh, for, for his operation because he saw it as the way of guaranteeing the future of the airborne forces Come on, guys, we're keeping Crete also would have been a morale boost and a dent in the unstoppable blitzmith. Yep, it would have been. Plus, North Africa, cut off. JNF, good night, Dr. Alex. Off to work. Take care. Hmm. Right. Well, it's pretty much half past, so I'm going to say thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Hope you all... Um, what is Thursday's topic? I have it written down. And I should say that before I go. So what I'm trying now is, as you will notice, that I have did it upcoming. Uh, it's convoy war in a perfect storm. PQ seventeen is on Thursday, so I have a nice busy one on Thursday. PQ seventeen and convoy war. So thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank okay, you. Thanks for this. Wish I'd heard it from the beginning. It's a good. It's an interesting thing, Crete. There's an. I've put an introduction out there, which is the shorter pre-recorded one, and usually better sound, but in this occasion, a bit weird on the sound. And this is the live. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, Aaron. Thank you. Right. I'm off to order my McDonald's. Take care. Hope you all had a good evening, and thank you again for joining me. Thank you. Good night, Jeff Richardson. Good night, William Cox. Thank you, Daniel Freeman. Thank you, Albert Zaski. Thank you, Jeff Beeler. Thank you, Jay Richardson. Thank you... Uh, Mike Owen, thank you, Nick Walters, thank you, Martin Doc, especially Martin, you've been talking a lot today. Uh, thank you, Grace Falski, thank you, Richard Hughes, thank you, Paul Johnson. I think that's everyone. 
And thank you, Stephanie. I think I saw her channel. And uh, thank you, um, Brecken. And thank you, Stephen. Basically, thank you, everyone, for taking part. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for all those things. It's all very kind of you. Thank you. Um, it will probably be 20 nuggets and fries, because let's be honest, I ain't a small guy. Maybe a double quarter pounder, as Jerishan keeps on, you know, suggesting it so strongly. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you, John Shea. Thank you, Carl Glenn Gals uh, Galsberg. Thank you. Right, let's do this.